I've always had a goal of becoming a world champion. You know, um, I actually, as a purple belt, became a world champion in, in a tournament in Brazil called the Copa do Mundo. So, you know, I was already like, my purple belt time was, you know, I was doing really well, I was competing a lot, and I was, I was winning. Um, so it wasn't until like I opened up my gym that I had to put a lot of my personal goals aside and, and, and start teaching. You know, I started teaching when I was a blue belt and, you know, I, and I was a, a, a purple belt when I opened up my gym and I got promoted, you know, to brown and then to black. But it wasn't until 2012 that I started to really, okay, you know, I think I want to try to do this as a black belt. I got my, I got my black belt in 2009. I competed the first year in Brazil, placed third, and then I had to again, go, you know, put my, my personal goals on pause because, you know, I had to stay here, teach and, and, and build the gym. Um, 2012 was the, was the, the year that all the black belts from Nouvenial um, decided to go back to the IBJJF. They were holding their first masters worlds in California. So all of my team, all of the world champions from my team, like uh, Vito Chalin, Hobson Mora, Gustavo Dantes, Bruno Bastos, Hiko Bastos, all of these guys, Andre Pedaneris was there coaching. Um, there's actually a, a famous picture of all the black belts um, that was taken the night before the Worlds in 2012. And, um, and I'm in there, I'm in, this, I'm in this picture. And I was thinking to myself, here I am amongst all of these high level black belts world champions and we're going to the tournament, you know. Um, I almost felt a bit insecure being in that lineup because I, I didn't feel maybe I should be I belong there. Gustavo Dantes is like, you know, a, a huge mentor to me. He's the BJJ mental coach and he was the one that really started to set my mind straight on not downgrading myself just because I'm standing amongst all these, you know, high level guys, you know. Um, so 2012, I competed, and I, you know, I lost my first match, and my entire team basically went on and became world champions again. I said, okay, you know, I, 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 I saw it, you know, I saw all my team win and everything, and I, I was like, you know, I want to do this. I want to become a world champion. I, I, I need to um, do this so that I feel that I belong in that lineup. 2013, I went back, lost my first match. 2014, I went back, lost my first match. 2015, I, I went, but I had a, like a really bad injury. I, I tore my labrum and um, I had already registered and everything. So I went anyways and you know, I won my first match. Um, it was my second match. I went against a guy that was from Checkmate and he was very aggressive, very strong. I was doing really well and and you know, I made some mistakes. I could feel my shoulder kind of messing me around a little bit, and and, it, and then I heard it pop during the match, and um, I ended up losing this this match. I continued the match, you know, but I just couldn't generate what I needed to do in that match. So um, I took some time off, you know, I rested, and then in 2016 I went back again. This time I took a team. You know, uh, I took one of my brown belts, Bill Beaudry, and, um, and a couple of other students. And Bill became a world champion that year as a brown belt. And uh, it was really funny because um, I was competing at the same time. So I'm like kind of going back and forth between, you know, my matches and his matches. So I'm coaching him and then I'm fighting at the same time. And I was getting ready to, to go and, and have, my, have my one match in the absolute division and Bill walked past me because he just finished winning his division in the absolute. And he walked by and I said, did you win? And he said, yep. And I was like, okay, good. So the whole time in my head, I was so happy for him because, you know, look, you know, I just created a world champion. And a lot of black belts go their whole career without producing high level students like this, you know, and, and I'm a very new black belt, you know, I'm, I'm here in Regina by myself and I'm creating world champions. So, you know, during my match, it was really funny. I was so distracted because I saw Bill walking towards the, the podium. And in my head, I was like, I'm gonna give him his black belt, you know, and I got distracted and, you know, I lost my match by points and I didn't even care. 
I didn't even care. I was like, I, I'm, I just get me off this mat, raise my, you know, raise the guy's hand. I'm out of here because I'm gonna go promote my my student. I literally ran across the the, the big arena that they were holding the world championships. I ran and I stripped my belt off and I ran up. He was just getting his gold medal and I told him to take his belt off and I promoted him to black belt. That was the same year that I also placed third in my division and I had a guy that won, you know, won gold. So I was, I was really happy. That was a really good um, year, you know, for the team and for us, right? You know, placing in the worlds, third was a huge uh, accomplishment. Having a student that placed third and won his, you know, the absolute. So we brought, we brought home some hardware that year. So then I just refocused again and I was like, I was that close. I was that close. I lost in the final, the semifinal, by like a ref's decision. So I'm like, you know what? I'm starting to build my confidence now. You know, I'm starting to really build my confidence as a black belt, you know. Uh, I'm going against some of the best guys, you know, and, and got refocused and started training for the 2017 Master Worlds. And again, like I told you, like Gustavo Dantas, like, you know, talking with him, he would really challenge me and ask me, you know, the hard questions. Why not? Why not you? What, what makes you think that you can't do this? And it, it really left something in, in the back of my head. And he was right. Why not me? Like, why can't I? I, I train every day. I put in the time. I've been in this, this, this sport for 20 years. I made a lot of sacrifices. I put, you know, um, my own goals aside for my students, all that stuff. So this is the time that I'm going to be a little bit selfish and I'm going to train hard and I'm, and I'm going to go try to do this again. So 2017, we went to Las Vegas and um, it was the same year that my coach, Wagner Fabiano, was also registered. And um, so him and I are side by side in the bullpen, you know, we're both, uh, winning our, our matches and uh, I went and cornered him when he, he won the final so my coach became a world champion and, like I was so happy you know the whole team was happy you know that we, we have a, a, a world champion from the team right now and then I was waiting to, to go into the final you know um, for, for my division and I was fighting the the number one master three world champion his name was um, Alberto Godoy he's like well-known athlete from Brazil, has a huge team, multiple world champion, you know, he's just uh, a killer. And here I am in the final with him. And uh, I end up beating him by points in the end and becoming a world champion. And it was like amazing. I always tell my students, you know, um, you know, if you if you believe and you dream, you can achieve it. You know, you can do it. You can do it. What's why not? Why can't you?